Hi everyone, I just wanted to open the video with a bit of a demonstration. This is not my own build, it's actually Paimon Bots, but I'll be referring to it throughout the video, this build specifically, because it's such a textbook example of how to build using this glitch. My own build using the glitch is a little less textbook. As you can see, it's very detailed with many, many details I won't be covering in the video, and he's still actually about 7,000 load away from the new load limit. You can practically think of it as having unlimited load. I actually discovered it shortly after posting my indoor load glitch video, but I noticed that even now no one's made a comprehensive guide for outdoor load glitches in English, so I've decided to make the first one. I did find a great guide written by PaimonBot, the guy who made this build, in Japanese. I'll be referring to it alongside my own findings at times. If you do speak Japanese, I've just attached the article and his YouTube channel in the description. And now, onto the video. There are two things to keep in mind before you start using this glitch. The first is that this glitch doesn't add to the load limit, it transfers load between different areas, and you can transfer load between three areas maximum for a limit of 30,000 load. The next important thing to note is that three area glitches require you to use the linking glitch, and it can get very tricky. Sharing load between two exteriors instead of three doesn't necessarily have this problem. If you don't know how to use the linking glitch, I pinned a separate tutorial in the comments below, and I'll be going over three exterior glitches specifically later on in the video. The first step is to go to a nearby exterior and place the furnishing you want to use in your build on a floating landform. So say I want to build on Autumn Hold Peak. I'm going to go to Winter Sweet Peak and I'll place it on this landform. Now click Create Set, click on the furnishings you want inside your build, then click on your floating landform. Without clicking Accept, drag your furnishings away from the exterior you want it to be in and then click Cancel. The furnishings will appear the exact same distance you dragged it, but in the opposite direction. So if you drag it straight back, it will appear straight forward. If you drag it diagonally back, it'll appear diagonally forward. This is the important one. If you drag it above landform height, it'll appear below landform height. After clicking Cancel, you can keep repeating the process until the furnishing is in your desired exterior. If you made it to this step, then congrats, you've successfully transferred your furnishing from one exterior to another. Now go to the area where your furnishing is currently in and click save. Now you aren't going to be able to see your furnishings outside of the area you originally placed it, but I'll show you how to work around that later in the video. Now that we got the basics out of the way, here's a diagram of exactly which exteriors you'll be able to transfer furnishings between. There are actually a few more that are technically possible, but they just aren't practical, so I didn't include them in my diagram. Now I'm going to share some important tricks for building using two areas and for building using three areas, because the approach can be very different. When building using two areas, I highly recommend Emerald Peak, just generally because it's so easy, so that's what I'll be covering first. But first, if you found all of this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. When you're building here, use your neighboring exterior to place expensive furnishings like trees, ponds, or large buildings. If many furnishings fit onto a single landform, I would use the neighboring area for that too. Now if you're worried about all the load you'll be wasting on floating landforms, you could incorporate the linking glitch into your builds, but I don't think that'll be necessary. My next big tip is going to be to mark where you want your furnishings to be beforehand. You can do this with teleport waypoints, as they'll always show no matter what area you're in. For example, watch how I place larger furnishings like this pond. First, I'm going to mark where I want my waterfall to be. Then I mark the direction my waterfall is facing, and it's easy to slip the pond in. When you've placed enough furnishings, though, you'll find you won't even need to use waypoints to know exactly where you're going to place your next furnishing. There will be lots of indicators already. 
Next, use floating landforms to drag your set on top of. Clicking cancel will sync the furnishings. Control the height of your floating landform to control how much you want to sync your set. And finally, just a bonus tip. Certain smaller furnishings will disappear if they're too far from your landform until you zoom in on them. For easier placement, don't displace these furnishings further than you need to. And now onto the tricky part, building with three areas. If you're using the two area glitch outside Emerald Peak, however, how you'll be building is going to be more similar to the three area glitch, so keep watching the video. Unlike Emerald Peak, you're going to want to use the neighboring area to transfer a link to furnishings. Just make sure your anchor is easily clickable. With linked furnishings, after displacing your furnishings at a certain distance, you'll realize your furnishings turn red when you try to adjust them. At this point, you'll need to create a set with your floating landform and edit the set to adjust your linked furnishings. When they are inside the area, first mark important landmarks with geo constructs or your teapot gadget. Albedo's skill works best for this as it lasts for the longest time, but GeoTraveler's skill works well here too. Then, go to your placement screen and place a waypoint over your construct or gadget. Now you'll always be able to tell where important furnishings are while you're building. If you're using two areas, you can proceed to build using your main area now. If you're using three areas, there's going to be much more to do. Just remember to never overlap furnishings from your two neighbor areas. You will never get perfect placement. Instead, use your neighbor areas to separately design two different parts of your build. Then connect them together and decorate further using your main area. As long as you have plenty of markers, you'll be able to get great accuracy building around and even between your transferred furnishings in your main area. Here's a great sample using PaimonBot's 3 area build. Red and blue represent the neighboring areas, and yellow represents the main area that you're transferring all the furnishings into. You'll notice this with all of PaimonBot's 3 area builds. The furnishings from each neighboring area are on opposite sides of his build, while the main area is being used to connect them and provide finishing touches. And this concludes my comprehensive guide to exterior load glitches. I do have a sample build for everyone linked in the description, and I've also linked PaimonBot's channel, so be sure to check them out. Happy building!